Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasures, and we've got a thrift haul. Here's where I'd normally cut in a, you know, snappy intro. I don't have that yet. Emily Conway, I'm waiting. I want to see it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so we got a thrift haul. Um, yesterday, the plan was um, at half off day, the, uh, a local thrift store, every, uh, every month, the first... Um, full weekend in the month, the first Friday, Saturday, Sunday that falls inside the calendar month is half off. Now, typically they're overpriced on a lot of stuff. Um, you can still find things in there, but a lot of stuff is overpriced, um, even just to buy if you're looking for a pair of jeans or whatever. Um, but in, in terms of resale, definitely overpriced. Um, but that first weekend... You can find some good deals, especially if you find the stuff that they missed. That's already a pretty good deal. And then you get it for half off. And we found a bunch of those this week. I'm pretty excited. Um, we did really, really well. I want to go over some of the stuff with you. Um, actually, some of the stuff is already sold. Uh, I got up and I, uh, I, I posted a bunch of it yesterday afternoon when I came home. And then uh, put a bunch more in draft and uh, drafted a bunch and sent those live this morning. And uh, out of that bunch, I think we've already sold five or six things, something like that, maybe five things. Um, so it's going really, really well. And I'm excited because that was the whole idea of yesterday's trip. I, I went there. I've got a whole pile of stuff that we've got to take care of still. I've got inventory to last us throughout the non-garage sale season. But I still got to go out there and find the new stuff, right? I, I know there's more stuff out there. So uh, the plan is to go out and when I go out thrifting, get that stuff listed within a week. Um, ideally, get that stuff listed inside of about two or three days. And then start digging into the old inventory and post that up until the next time you go sourcing. Um, and it's working so far. I'm, uh, I'm halfway through a tote of old inventory, sold some of that, and uh, it, it, it's working really well. And it's nice to see, because I, I went, like I said yesterday, the intent was get stuff that'll sell quick. So I looked really intently at sell-through rate. I, I wanted to make sure the stuff I was getting was not only going to be a good return on investment, but was going to be a quick return on investment, or at least, you know, hopefully a quick return. And I think a lot of the stuff that we got is going to be. So let's go over that stuff. Okay, so the first thing that we got, the biggest thing that we got, is this monster. Look at this thing. This thing is huge. Look at the size of it. It's freaking huge. Um, God, I love that movie. This is a Sony. Um, if you watch The Bearded Picker, you know Sony sells. Um, this is a, a CD and DVD player. It is DVP NC615. Now, just like uh, Nike shoes have that uh, that six-digit number on them and then the code after that, the, the color code, Sony's have that on there. Actually, most electronics have that on there. You can look up the model number, so it's super easy to look up comps. This is, uh, I mean, they say tested. You never know. Um, it plugged in and it turned on, but I didn't test it past that. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm banking on it working. Um, 20 bucks is what they had it tagged half off so i got it for 10. these sell the sell through rate is uh pretty strong there was like 20 some more sold than are listed so that means it sells pretty well um as long as i price it competitively i should be okay and uh i should get somewhere between 39.99 and 49.99 plus shipping out of this so um pretty good flip for this all i'll have to do is uh put some i need uh some av cables to put with it. I've got a bunch of those. Uh, I store those up to put stuff, put with stuff like this, like VCRs, stuff like that. So I'll throw a pair of AV cables in with this, clean it up, test it out, make sure that it works. But uh, yeah, it should be 10 bucks into about 30 or 40. So this will be nice. Okay, these did not have an exact comp, but uh, I just knew looking at them, they were gonna go. Right. These are, uh, these are golf covers, uh, golf head covers, plush alien head. Come on, who is not going to want one or two of these in their bag? Um, these were tagged at a dollar a piece. It actually, they wrote right on here, um, one dollar in pink marker, but a little bit of shout spray, let it sit, scrub it, 
came right out. So that was awesome. I was a little bit nervous about it, but they were tagged a buck a piece, got them for 50 cents because it's half off. So a dollar for the pair. I've got them up. Uh, I'll put all the listings up uh, for the stuff that I have listed already. Um, these, and most of it is, these are listed, I think, at $14.97 plus shipping. We'll see. I mean, they're pretty unique, so I, I really don't know. But I'm going to give it a shot, and uh, we'll see. I actually had somebody offer to buy two of them this morning um, at $10 a piece, so $20 plus shipping. Not a bad deal on a $1 investment, right? $20. Bucks. But they'd only been up for like 12 hours. So I countered at 12 bucks a piece, and he declined. So he didn't want to chip in four more dollars. Too bad. Um, so these could have gone out the door, but they didn't. I'm going to sit and wait. Uh, there's already a watcher on my Australian listing. I'm not worried. These are going to go. And if they don't, you know what? It's a dollar investment. They don't take up any room. But yeah, uh, golf head covers tend to move relatively well. Um, from what I see, as long as you get like the, the different ones like this, I've never tried it before, but we're going to give it a shot. And uh, it seems like they sell between 10 and 15 bucks. So uh, yeah. Alien heads, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Next thing we got, uh, these, it was uh, tagged a dollar, got it for 50 cents. Um, don't know anything about it. There's no there's no comps on, uh, on these, but uh, vintage, clearly look vintage. I can't find a date on them anywhere, um, but made by Sandy Lion. Typically they make, uh, when I looked it up, they make stickers, but uh, apparently Sandy Lion made these die cut um, Mickey Mouse, Mini and Pluto. These are uh, Easter erasers. I don't know. Um, for 50 cents, I took a shot on them. I put it up. I'm pricing high. Uh, put it up for 19.97 free shipping. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, here's one that uh, that already sold. This actually sold overnight. Um, I got the bag ripped open because I I broke the little seal on the top. I pulled it off the little tab and I couldn't get it back open, so I just ripped into it. Um, so I'll have to put this in new packaging, which is fine. It's just a Ziploc bag. This is uh, an Apple product. I found three Apple products all sitting on the shelf in bags innocuously. They actually, it was dated 1-2, um, so uh, they haven't been out there that long. I, I can't imagine they would have lasted very long. Um, they date all of the stuff they put out, so it's been sitting there just since the second, so for a couple of days. This is, uh, let me pull out this to show you. It's an airport. This is a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, a router. So uh, Airport Express. It comes with the manual, with the power cable, with the disc. So you got the software. Um, pretty complete set here. I think somebody got some new Apple gear for Christmas and they surrendered their old gear to the thrift store. Um, paid $5 for this. Put it up and we got 40 two and change i think I'll, I'll put the listing up uh, or the sale up over there but yeah this already sold free shipping but uh really good return and very fast return off of five bucks but that's not the only thing i mentioned a couple other apple things how about apple tv now this is a second generation uh apple tv it's got uh it's got the unit it's got the remote which a lot of the listings online don't have the remote so we've got the unit we've got the remote and we've got the power cable um, once again, came in on the same date. I think probably came from the same people and was tagged 10 bucks, but half off, we got it for five. And the great news is there was a second one. They had a second TV in their house. So we got two of them. Um, one of these sold this morning. So we got uh, 39, we got right around 40 bucks. I'll put the listing up once again. Um, but, uh, this a really nice sale again, five bucks turning it into 30, 40 bucks really, really quick. And I've already got uh, interest and I've got watchers on the other. Cause once again, I looked at sell through rates, the sell through rates on these are ridiculous. So this other one is going to sell very, very quickly. Okay. Something else that has sold already is, um, an old vintage. It's not a Walkman cause it's not Sony, right? But same idea. It's a portable pocket radio. Um, it is a Sonyo. Compact AM FM stereo radio RP66. Now this is um, new in an open box. The thing was still in its original bag. The bag had been opened, but the original twist tie is actually still on the uh, the headphones. The headphones are coming with this too. Now none of the ones that were listed on this, there were only three or four listed, and I think three or four sold. So 
pretty good, but none of the ones listed had the original headphones. Uh, I think maybe one of them had the box. So I had a pretty good uh, head start on those guys um, because this is this thing is new. It's never been used. It's in a pristine condition. Um, even the box, frankly, is in pretty good shape. So made in Japan, put this thing up and it sold, um, I don't know if it was overnight. I think it was, I think it went overnight. Uh, I posted this yesterday. Um, so 33, and we actually had, uh, it sold for $33.99. I had actually had an offer really quickly um, within a couple hours for 20 bucks um, and countered on that. And then uh, somebody came through and bought it full price. So $33.99 uh, plus shipping. So uh, this is going out the door. And interestingly, I've sold another one like this. Um, very similar if it wasn't the same model. Um, very, very similar. Also had the box. We found that at an estate sale. Got that for a dollar. This one I got, um, it was half off. Got it for three dollars. Um, sold to what I believe is a forwarding company, like a freight forwarding company um, in Oregon. I think the other one that we sold a while back um, went to a freight forwarding company in San Francisco. So um, this likely going uh, at the end of the day to an international buyer. Uh, but I, I got no problem with that and they paid right away. They've got fantastic feedback. So this going out to their door, $33.99 off a $3 investment. Okay, this thing. Um, one of the more ridiculous sell-through rates I've seen. Um, there are, I believe, when I, at least when I looked this up, there were two listed and something like 283 sold. It's ridiculous. Um, I, Tura Pure, I don't know. I looked it up and it's basically, it, it's a water filter system. These are hydrogen water filters. Um, there's three of them. Now the box is wrecked. And so that's gonna hurt me a little bit if people are worried about the box being wrecked. But uh, I took a picture inside the, uh, all three of the filters are completely sealed. They're, they're just fine. Um, this is some sort of ionization. It, it's supposed to add minerals and stuff to your water. I don't know. Um, it's, it's some sort of water filter, but apparently these filters are very expensive and very sought after on the secondary market. So um, I've got these up at, uh, I think it's like 34, 35 bucks. And uh, I expect them to go pretty soon. If they don't, I may uh, lower the price just a touch. I got to look at what uh, I, I did price a little high just because there are so few listed. So I, if I get an offer for like 30 bucks, I'm going to take it. This was uh, listed at 12, but I got it for six bucks. Now that's paying up a little bit for filters, right? But the sell through rate is ridiculous. And so we're going to turn these around pretty quickly and make some money on it. So keep an eye out for this Tura Pure. My guess is any of the other stuff that you find, whether it's the pitcher or whatever that you find that's this brand, it's going to sell quick. Okay. This one, I really don't know. Um, I, like I said, most of this stuff, I looked for comps and I looked at sell through rate, stuff like that. Not all of it. The golf clubs, uh, the, the head covers I took a shot at. This one I also took a shot at, uh, mostly because it's Harley. This is dated. Um, it's 1999. Uh, 1999 Harley. And uh, it's it's got a specific bike on there. This is one of those freezer mugs. It's got the, the liquid inside there. Um, the double wall thing that you can put in the fridge or in the freezer and keeps your drinks cold. It's just a plastic but uh, so, I mean, it's not super expensive, but it's in pretty decent shape considering it's from 99 and uh, it's the uh, 1954 FLF anniversary. Um, so this particular bike uh, had its anniversary and uh, you can actually find some videos on it. It's just a, it's a pretty beloved bike. So I gave it a shot. I, I think it's up for like 20 bucks, like 1999 or something like that. So. We'll see. This may be one that I sit on for a little bit, but at some point, um, a Harley guy is going to come along. Harley lady is going to come along, and they're going to want this because they love that bike. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't take up any room. I got it for, it was marked $2, so I got it for a buck. So I'll sit on this one for a buck. Got another one for you. This one is an old Minolta. Um, and what this is is an underwater camera. It's a 35-millimeter camera. And the camera itself is in great shape. Oh, I left it on. So let's see if, if I killed the battery. Let's see. 
I might have killed the battery. Nope. There we go. Um, so this thing still works. It advances the way it should. It's ridiculously clean inside. Um, and that's the thing you want to look for when you're looking at these old cameras. You, you want to make sure. And then you can actually... Um, I don't know if we saw anything on there, but I'm blind. Um, you can see the stuff move. You can see the motors working. You can hear it's not grinding. Everything's working okay. Super, super clean. Um, this still locks, so it's going to be... It, apparently, it looks like it's watertight. It seems like these have a pretty good record of being strong, sturdy cameras. So, um, it's pretty cool. It's the Weathermatic Dual 35. If you look these up on eBay, guys, I know a lot of people think old 35 millimeter cameras obsolete. Nobody's going to want them. They're junk. Guess what? This thing has a really good sell-through rate um, and for pretty good. Now, they they priced this at... Um, where did they price this at? They priced this at $15. I, I wouldn't have bought it at $15, but at half off for $7.50, uh, I think I'm going to get a about 34 35 bucks something like that out of it so uh it, it's worth it so um keep an eye out for this the weathermatic dual 35 vintage tools keep a lookout i've done really well on a couple of vintage planers so saw this sitting there thought i'd take a look at it it's a delta uh delta milwaukee auto set miter gauge um, this helps um with saws band saws um that sort of thing um, you can adjust angles with this guy. I loosen it up enough. Yeah, see, it'll shift. Um, there it goes. So you can set your angles on this thing. It's going to be very accurate because we all know when they made things this long ago, they made them accurate. Um, this, uh, I'm trying to remember what I listed it at. It actually was a, a little bit rusted up on here, but uh, a little tip, tip for you. Barkeeper's Friend, the powdered stuff. Um, get some Barkeeper's Friend, put a little bit of water in it, make it a paste, and just rub it on here. I rubbed it all down the bar, um, and actually on, on the dials here, uh, a few spots up here. Um, rub it on there, let it sit for like 20 minutes, just gooed on there, right? And then take a toothbrush and just scrub it. That stuff will come off. The, the white Barkeeper's Friend is going to come off brown, it's taking off all the surface rust. It's really, really good. It's not going to get rid of that deep rust, but it's going to get rid of a lot of the surface rust and make your tools look a ton better before you post them um, versus people that just get them and put them up as they are. So it's super easy, takes off a little bit of the rust, makes this thing look a lot better. Uh, I picked this thing up. It was tagged at five bucks, got it for two fifty, and I'm expecting to sell it probably in the uh, 30 to 40 dollar range and I again I think it's gonna move pretty quickly so keep an eye out for this the the brand and it actually almost doesn't matter the brand if you get a vintage uh, miter gauge they seem to sell well but this one is a Delta Milwaukee so keep an eye out for these okay the next thing um, frankly it's not all that valuable um, but it's just one of those things that was too cool um, I, I wanted to save it right? I wanted to get it eventually into the hands of somebody that would appreciate it. It's just, it's honestly not, the, the resale value is not there, but it's okay. It was $1.25 is all I paid for it. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. This is by uh, Vicente Blasco Ibanez. Um, really cool old book, um, a very old book. In fact, this is from 1918, so officially an antique. And when I see things that are a hundred years old, I... I don't know. There, there's something about it. If it's something that's affordable, if it's something I can save, um, I like to do it. So honestly, this is probably a $10 book is, is all that it's probably worth. And there is a ton listed, not that many sold. I don't know. It's going to sit for a while, but it's from 1918. So I wanted to pick it up. Okay. Now we've got a little bit of a, uh, a thrift lesson here. Um, I don't remember all the prices of all these things. I'm going to flash them up over here because I've got, I think, everything in this bag posted. But they had this thing. Um, you can see here, <laughs> it's very accurate in what's in here. Minolta SRT-102, which is correct, with case. This case is shot. This case is no good. But it's got the Minolta. 
with case and lots of extras you can see there. Um, Forty dollars is the normal tag, and honestly, it's probably worth it at forty bucks. At least it's worth it to think about, um, depending on what's in there. Now it's half off, so twenty bucks, and I knew right away it's worth it. I've sold this camera before. I've sold this camera body before, and it is a very quick seller, and a very steady seller at $25. It'll sell almost every time at $25. I priced it high at like $29.99. Somebody sent me an offer for $25. It's, this is plus shipping, and I took it. Um, I actually posted this this morning. Um, I, I, it was one of the drafts that I posted this morning. Um, got ready to go to the gym, went to the gym, got halfway through my run, and an offer came in. So this thing lasted about 90 minutes on eBay is all, which, um, as you guys know, that's very, very quick on eBay. Um, this is really cool. Let me show you some of this stuff. Okay, we're going to take a few of these things out and uh, I'll show you. Um, this one, not super valuable. This is like 10 bucks. It's going to sit for a very long time, just an old flash. This isn't all that exciting. Um, but a two times teleconverter, that is going to do okay. Again, uh, I'm, I'm going to put up the stuff over here. You can see what I've got this stuff posted at. So we've got that. We've got, uh, we've got these, these are a, a close up. These are screw on, um, spiral light close up lenses. That'll give you a plus one, plus two, plus three. It's just to, to get macro, not super valuable, but there's also not a lot of them out there. So, um, got these. Okay. Now this is the best one out of the lot. Um, this a Minolta, it's made in Japan and, uh, it's a Rokor X. Now you can look, um, when you're trying to figure, cause a lot of people don't know, how do I know what are the valuable lenses, right? I don't know all of them. Um, there's a couple ways you can look it up. One of them it has on there, you see at the top there, there, there is a number. Um, this one is three, seven, six, seven, six, one, six up here. Um, sometimes you can find it with that number, not all the time. Um, actually not most of the time, unfortunately. Um, but you can just punch in, this is a Minolta. You can punch in Japan for camera stuff. That's a big deal. Um, it's the Rokor X. You can punch that in. There's lots of keywords you can look up. Um, but what you really want to look up, this is a, is, um, 1.4. And the F stop, it's a 55 millimeter camera or 50, it's 50, 50 millimeters. So you want to look up 50 and 1.4. Now the fastest, it, it, they put it up there like a fraction and without getting, I don't know how to get it without it reflecting on there, but um, without getting too deep in the weeds on this thing, the smaller that that number is now the telephoto lenses, um, very many of those are going to be worth more money. Um, not all of them actually, but some of the telephotos, so the, the big giant lenses, those will be worth money. But some of these little ones are actually worth good money. Um, what you want to do is look at that where it says the, um, 1.4, the smaller the number is right there, the faster the lens, the faster the lens, the more expensive the lens typically. Um, so that's just a little, you know, little cheat for you to look, you don't even have to understand exactly why just the smaller that number is probably the better it is. And another tip for you when you look at, because I've come across um, sets like this. I mean, again, look, this is just, it's camera stuff in a bag. Um, and just like we said with the Minolta, people think that old cameras are junk, right? Nobody's going to want an old 35 millimeter film camera. You know what? There are a lot of people that do. Um, you look at the sell through rates on, uh, on these things and it's really, really good. Um, forgot what I was going to say. A lot of times you're going to find, whether you find this, I've, this is the third time I've come across a bag like this. I've come across one at uh, a garage sale and I picked up, I found one at an estate sale that I picked up and now I found one at a thrift. Um, or four, I take that back four. I found one on Facebook marketplace as well. Um, people getting rid of grandpa or grandma's old camera stuff. They think it's no good. They just want to get a couple bucks and get it out. So they pile it all in the bag and price it all together. They don't take the time to look these things up. Um, tip for you, if you want to find out just a generic value, you look up the camera body and you look up 
the lens um, that is on the camera because typically whoever used this before his best lens is going to be the one that's on the camera because it was the last one he was using um, not all the time but again just as a rule of thumb the best lens is often the one that's still attached to the camera body so look that one up this one like i said it's about a 70 dollars lens remember i got everything for 20 bucks so we'll set that there um what else do we got in here well let's show you the camera itself uh, this is already sold this sold like i said this sold within about 90 minutes at uh at 25 bucks plus shipping um this is what it looks like it's an srt 102 um minolta made the sr line in the 70s i believe it started in 70 71 with the 101 the 102 they only made for about two or three years it ended in 75 i believe um, and this camera among people that are into the 35 millimeter old school manual cameras this is the golden goose okay this is the top of the line this is the one that they want uh, now minolta came out with SRs after this, the 103, they, they, they came, they were making them into the eighties, but as they got cheaper to produce, they started skimping. There aren't as many features. It's got multiple features inside of this camera that they don't in the ones that came after it. And it's also made old school, heavy duty. This is a heavy camera. And so this is one that people, uh, it, it it's in that perfect spot where people just getting into it. Um, it's affordable and it's a workhorse. It, it holds up. It's very good camera. But people that have been in it a while, um, if they don't have one of these, they want one of these because they know just how good they, these are. You look at reviews of this camera online. Look at all. It's the uh, SRT 102. It's not going to be a perfect five, but it's going to be like 4.8, 4.9 out of five. People love these cameras. So if you get one of these, it's not going to last long. I knew when I got the bag, this was going to pay for the entire thing. And then all the lenses are going to be bonus because when you get stuff like this, don't sell it all together. You'll see sales where people sell the whole thing together and they make 80 or 90 bucks. It's a great turnaround. If you, if you don't want to part it out, that's fine. Um, it's going to be a little bit expensive to ship. That's why you don't get quite as much. Um, but you're going to make a whole lot more if you part this thing out. This is 25 bucks. Okay. So now the bag is paid for. I don't mind hanging on to these lenses and selling them piece by piece. Let me show you what else we got. Sorry about that. Um, another lens. Remember, we want to look at the top. This is a Spiritone Pluricoat. It's a 135 millimeter lens, so it's going to get closer. Okay. So it's a little bit more of a telephoto lens than the other one, but uh, on the top, it's a 2.8. The other one twice as fast, basically twice as valuable. So this still a lens that somebody's going to buy, but uh, not as valuable as the other one. But again, uh, 20 bucks, this is worth that by itself. How about another one? This one, a uh, Pluricoat 28 millimeter, 2.8. So slower, not quite as deep as this one. But uh, it's still a good lens, and it's still going to sell. Um, I think these are the two. I gave something a shot. I put these up at auction um, just to see what would happen. Um, I think I've probably already put those up there. One of these two had, had a watcher on it already. So it's, it's probably going to go. And so we're, again, going to make like 20 25 bucks off of one more lens. Part out everything. I found other stuff in there too. This, there's actually a ton of these. I'm going to hang on to this forever, but it's the Kodak Photo Pocket Guide. It's up for like $9.99, free shipping. I don't know. Eventually it's going to go, but they made a ton of these. Um, this one, not so common. When you find the camera, you don't usually find the manual with it. Um, one of them sold for like 14 bucks and change. Uh, and so I put mine up for 12 and a half bucks and it actually already has a watcher. So parting this thing out, don't look past the little stuff. We're going to make 10 bucks off of this thing when it sells. That's half the price of the whole thing off of the old manual. Found in there a couple of old other camera stuff, a Konica. Um, this camera itself actually sells. Um, 
30 40 bucks i think it's not super valuable but it does sell pretty well the big mini bm 311z my guess is a lot of those again don't have the manual so i put this thing up eventually this thing probably go we got more he had a spare strap in there this is an original you, you put in your listing it's oem because this is uh, original equipment from the manufacturer pentax from japan so if somebody wants a original pentax uh neck strap i got one so yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I wish the bag was in better shape because we could sell the bag probably as well. I might try to wash it and we'll see. Um, there may still be some value there. I'm gonna part this thing out and uh, get all the money I can out of it. So I've got no problem putting spray and wash on that thing, running it through a gentle cycle and seeing what happens. But um, yeah, we're gonna do really well off of that camera and we've already paid off the camera with, uh, with the camera body. Okay guys, I know this is getting a little bit long, but I think these are all pretty much bolo items. I mean, I grant you there's a few in there that I just slipped in that uh, uh, I got just because, but for the most part, um, I think these are items that you want to look out for, and these are no different. Um, I'm sure you've seen these before. These are um, army boots. These are um, the ones that I see most often here. Now, we do have uh, National Guard here um, just up the road in Gray Falls. We've got Malmstrom Air Force Base. Uh, We've got a lot of service members here in in Helena and in the area. So I don't know if I see these more than uh, the rest of y'all do, but uh, see them fairly often. I found them at garage sales, um, see them at the thrift store all the time. Now, some of them are beat up, and the beat up ones sell well. I try to find the new ones. Um, and these are very clearly new. They've never been worn. I think what happens is guys get issued new ones, and they have them that they're already broken in, and they don't want to switch to new ones. And so these just sit. And uh, when they get out, or even if they're still in, they just donate them. Um, and so we get a lot of these show up. Um, well, I say a lot. It's not a lot, but it's not uncommon to see them. Now, these are Welco is the brand. I'm going to see if I can get this because they put the tag. There we go. The Welco, they put the tag inside. And sometimes there's actually a Welco that's sort of embossed on the side of the boot um these are i think these are the big ones yeah these are size 11. um so these are bigger um in this size i think i can charge a little bit more uh i think probably about 50 55 bucks i had to get for these and uh these ones were they, they were priced different and i hate that they do that i don't know why but um these were priced 15 bucks i got them for half off so 750 and i think they'll, they'll probably um go right in the neighborhood of 50 bucks so um these very good i actually got two pair we actually got another pair of these and here they are um these are also welco um not from the same service member because they're a different size. Uh, these are size nine, nine and a half wide. So that it's a wide is going to help. And nine and a half is a good common size. So again, it's the same boot. This is um, the key words that you're going to look for when, when we're talking. These are it's uh, combat army desert tan. Um, it's also got uh, the Vibram sole on the bottom. And you can see um, these were 25 bucks. Um, I don't know why. Um, 25 got them for half off so these ones um, probably won't go quite as high um, just the smaller size the bigger size I think I can charge more but again I, I think I should get probably 45 or so for these so and, and these are consistent sellers they do take a little while sometimes but every pair that I've ever picked up has sold so uh, keep an eye out for the army boots now I did leave a pair behind um, it was a, more of a mountain boot. It had Gore-Tex insulation in it, which typically is really, really good. Um, and the price was good on them, but they were size 7. And size 7 just doesn't move. And eventually you'd have to sell it for cheap because size 7 is just a bad size um, for shoes. But uh, look them up. Be sure you know what you're getting, but uh, keep an eye out for the Army boots. Okay, and the last thing is the coolest thing that I found. A pair of Tony Llamas. Uh, Tony Lama, a name you want to look out for in boots. 
Um, we might do a boots video at some point. I'm just starting to get into them. I'm starting to learn a little bit about them. I mean, I, I know a little bit about them, but I'm, I'm learning resale wise uh, a little bit about them, which ones are valuable. Um, these are, <laughs> are valuable. Um, I got these, they're marked 35 bucks, right? Um, again, half off, so $17.50. These are a deal at $35. Um, there is wear on the bottom, but not terrible. There's some wear on the heel, but you look, and I don't think these were worn a ton because there's not a lot of heel wear on the back here. There's not a lot of that rubber worn off. Um, these are in really, really good shape, especially because these are vintage boots. Now, you see on the bottom here, these are... Um, you can see the scales even coming up a little bit. This, this is Python or water snake. Um, most of the listings have Python. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you want to look for is exotics, right? Tony Llama. If you look up Tony Llama solds online, look up um, Tony Llama ostrich, right? It's going to have a little bit of a bumpy feel to it a little bit different look up uh tony llama again snake skin python water snake stuff like that look up tony llama um lizard any of the exotic um finishes on this they're gonna go really really well um these are in great shape it's a good size these are size uh was it ten and a half yeah these are ten and a half d and you can look inside here maybe there we go on the back there tony llama will have the brand the the style number just like nike so you can look these up there tony llama 8114 um so you can look these up you can find the comps super easy on these but you're you know if you see stuff like this that looks different it's likely going to be valuable valuable particularly if it's uh tony llama um ariat is another one to keep an eye out for there's there's several brands and we may get into that later but these boots there's um not another 10 and a half d out there right now i don't think um but if you look at the sales history now there was a a, a huge like size 13 i think it was um size 13 pair sold for more than 200 dollars in the last three months these aren't going to go that high that's not typical of these i think that's just because they were in really good shape and they were a really large size. These are still a bigger size and these, these are still in very good vintage condition. So these are gonna sell in the neighborhood of maybe 130, $140 plus shipping. Um, really, really good. I was super excited. I saw them and uh, instantly I put them in my cart uh, before anybody else could grab them. It was one of those like snatching and throwing in the cart um, just because I, I hadn't even looked at the, the name brand yet, but I was pretty sure it was going to be Tony Llama. Um, Tony Llama based in Texas and they make fantastic boots. People look for that name in particular. So we may do a boot video here in a little bit, but just wanted to give you a little teaser. That is a, uh, that's a fantastic find. That was, we ended up walking out the door. We paid, uh, one hundred and five dollars is uh is what we ended up paying these are going to pay for the entire haul and we've actually through the things that we've sold today the electronics that's actually already paid for it so whatever i get for these is going to be pure profit anything else that you saw past those i think four or five electronic things so um really really good thrift haul i'm really really excited um I may go back on Sunday just to see if there's something I missed because I found some really cool stuff in there Sunday, the last day of their half off weekend. If we find anything, I'll let you know. But for now, me and my boots, we're walking. Thanks, guys. Bye.